Welcome back to Wayland Wrench and on today's video I'm going to show you how to install new pinball tables on your new installed software. Uh, what the file types are, where they go, and all of the little tips and tricks to be able to get this stuff functioning properly and things that you would learn over hours and hours of messing with this stuff, but you guys get the luxury of getting this set up very quickly. So let's go. to Nailbuster's all-in-one baller installer, we now have all the programs we need on our computer installed and ready to go for our virtual pinball cabinet, which is really quite cool. However, if you do do this route and you haven't experienced anything in virtual pinball community yet, you're gonna be still lost a bit because we don't know how each of these individual programs work. We don't know what the file types are. We don't know where they go and all of the little intricacies that are gonna make a game work or have issues. So that's what today's video is all about. Now, what I thought I would do is I would share the last six months, eight months of my research and, and getting the setup uh, at home with you guys in a condensed format. And I'm even gonna put some jump points in the description down below so that if there's a specific topic that you're trying to find, you can get to it a lot faster. So. Let's get our very first tables put into this thing. All right, so first thing up is we actually need some new tables. So we have got to go find that. Now, I'm not going to aim you and give you links exactly to anywhere specific. I think it's pretty simple. You open up Google and you type virtual pinball and you do your own searching. Uh, you're gonna find a bunch of places where you can get some more info and get tables possibly and anything else you need to get these things working. So I'll leave that with you guys to find that stuff. Okay, so ahead of time, I've already downloaded all the files needed to be able to get a, a game working, and uh, so I can show you where they all go. So go ahead and get your table files, and then you can follow along. Now, I just put these folders in here to keep track of everything for me. So I'll open this, and here are my demo table stuff. Now, in general, you're going to need three different types of files to be able to get a pinball table working. So you're going to need the table itself, you're going to need a direct B2S file, that's for your back glass images uh, and some DMD stuff. And then you are also probably going to need a ROM for the table. Now, if you are trying to get an electromechanical, like an older table going, it probably doesn't even need a ROM, so that's kind of cool. Uh, but if you're looking at, you know, 1980s and later, you're gonna need to have a ROM as well. So, uh, first thing, let's start with the tables. So, these files all come as zips because of the size of them, so you're gonna have to make use of 7-zip for unzipping and zipping the stuff. So, tables, they need to be unzipped. So, let's start with that. So, right-click, 7-zip. Let's just extract it here. All right, so we've got our table here. Now, notice that the file extension is .vpx, so that's gonna tell you that it's a Visual Pinball 10 table. Now you might also see VPT, which is a legacy table, so that'll be Visual Pinball 8 or 9. So the, both of those files will work. Now, the, where the table goes, we're gonna right click and copy this. Where it goes is, find your, where you've installed Pinball, so VPinball on the C drive, open it up, and then we've got Visual Pinball. And then where it says Tables, this is the folder you wanna put it. So, and if you notice that since we have the one uh, Leprechaun King that installed with the Baller installer, it's giving us a heads up, it's a .vpx, so the table files go here. So that's kind of cool that you can see that. So let's right click and we'll paste it into here. Now, if we go back to the other folder here, that's our table. Now our direct B2S file, it also has to be unzipped, so go ahead and right click 7-zip and we're going to extract it here as well. All right, and its file extension is .direct b2s. So that's how you're going to keep track of it. Now, one thing to note is this file has to go exactly the same folder as the table. So we're going to copy and paste it there. But the other thing it has to be is the name before the file extension has to be exactly the same, otherwise it will not work. So a really easy way that I do this is I take the table file, right click it go to rename it and if you notice it only highlights the name that we were not changing the file extension and then you can right click copy and then go up to your direct b2s file right click on it rename and then you can just right click over it and paste and it will put exactly the same name so you can see it changed the the first part of that to what we need and then just click off and that'll change 
Now often when I'm doing lots of tables, I might just select all of this. That way I can copy and paste it and put it in the table file. But since we've already got this one here, I'm just going to select the direct B2S file, copy that, and go back to our table file. All right, cool. Now, one of the other things that uh, since we're in here right now is you notice that the leprechaun had an ultra DMD folder here as well. Some of the tables you download will specify and give you an extra folder like this ultra DMD and this is where it has to go as well. So eventually you'll have a bunch of folders in here with the tables as well. Now you don't have to change the names or anything. They should be named properly already. And uh, if you take a look inside, it's basically full of JPEGs and PNGs uh, to get the proper artwork going for your DMD. So that's kind of cool. All right, now technically we have everything we need to put this table in except the ROM. And if it needs a ROM, you're actually going to get an error. So I'm gonna show you that. So you can use this as kind of like a troubleshooting thing. So if I go back and we're going to go to our shortcut. Now, we don't really want to go to popper or anything yet. We, we want to make sure that it works properly before the front end takes over. So we're going to open up Visual Pinball X. And then it's automatically opening up the folder, you know, which game do you want to play? And you can see that we've got our new demo table. So because I didn't put the ROM in for this, it's going to come up with an error. And uh, it's actually really cool because it'll show us and tell us exactly what it's needing and then we can go find it. So let's open up the table. All right, now if you take a look at it, it's actually telling us that it's looking for a missing ROM. And if you look at it, it's in the bracket or the quotations here. Totan underscore 14. So you can use this to be able to figure out which table you need and which version of it as well. So now you can go ahead and try to find that and get that working. Now you can see that this uh, Tales of the Arabian Nights has tried to start. However, it won't work. And this is a very common thing that happens to every single table. On the first time you open it, it will just look dead. There won't be any lights, nothing's happening, and uh, what it's requiring you to do is either reset the game by pressing F3 on your keyboard, or you can literally just uh, press Q twice and kick out of it, and then reload it. And what it's doing is it's preparing the files needed in the background uh, the very first time you start it. I, think, I believe it's a .ini file that needs to be created and updated, uh, or an nvram uh, file. So one of those two things in the background has to get done. So if we press F3, get it to reset. All right, so in this case, we're just going to kick out of this. So quit. Now, because I um, on purpose didn't put the ROM file in the proper spot there, it's coming up with that error so I can show you that. So now if we go back to our folder with our stuff we needed, Right here is the ROM for this table. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy this and I'll show you where your ROM files go. So back to our C drive. We just go back here. Now when you're in Visual Pinball, instead of going to tables, you have to go to VPIN main. And then you look for the ROM folders. Okay, and right here is where that one's gotta go. Now, because of that error I just showed you, this isn't going to work. It's going to be looking for that specific name, so I'm going to rename it just so that we have it working here. So it was totan underscore 14 zip. And then if you just double cleft click, you can kind of see all the ROMs and files that are required inside. All right, now that that's in the proper spot, we can go back to our visual pinball and this time when we press play it should pop up and work the first time. All right, there we go. We've got the lights, we've got our DMD going, we've got our back glass going. Everything is ready to go. Very cool. So if you need to reset a game to get it to work, you can press F3. That will reset the table. And if you want to quit out of the table, then you just press Q twice, and then it'll set you back to your visual pinball. Now, a couple things that you will need to know about kind of navigating around this. You don't need to know absolutely everything, but there are some things. 
So first thing is preferences. So you've got all your kind of different kind of settings and things that you can go in here. Uh, one of the ones you're going to use quite a bit is your video graphics options. So this is telling you what your monitor is, which should be already set, and all of your graphics details that you can go in and one at a time enable or disable things to uh, have the best looking game yet not decrease your performance. And uh, there is something, a little slider bar here, you can kind of just make it quite weak or quite strong uh, depending on what your PC is. So if you think you got something pretty good, you can just set everything to high, or you think you got just the bare minimum to get this thing going, set it for low, and uh, you can just kind of creep up on the performance. So it's a really nice function to have there. Uh, some other things, if you are making a cabinet like we are, you are always going to want to use this setup here, so make sure that's clicked. That way you have full screen setup. Uh, other than that, you can kind of play with whatever else is in here. Okay, if we go back to preferences, now when you're first learning this, there's a lot of keyboard kind of buttons and you need to know what's what. So you can go in here and configure the keys. And it's not so much for you to go and start changing things right off the bat. Uh, this would be more for figuring out, you know, how do I play the game? How do I start it? How do I add money? Uh, that kind of thing. So this is good to know. And you can change things if you're not happy with the way stuff is. So you might have some stuff with um, some volume or some audio not working. So preferences, you can go into audio and you can select your music and your sound. You can also change the volumes here a little bit if you're not happy with it. And uh, you can change any of your settings to work with your audio cards or your motherboard. Now one of the other things that you might have to mess with is the script. Now when I open this up, don't have a corner area on me. Uh, if you take a look at it, it's, it's all C++ kind of coding and it looks very daunting right off the bat but once again uh, you do not have to know much about what's going on here to get these things to work pretty much they work right out of the box now some things to know uh, there at the beginning of these programs there's usually some kind of user functions that you can kind of turn things on and off and set volumes and uh, turn swearing on and off for some tables that are like that uh, you can change certain musics and, and soundtracks and things like that just by looking and reading what's here right so for example here uh, you can change whether there's a skill shot wall or not so if you change this value to zero then it's no wall if you leave it at one it, it gives whatever's written there and uh, keep in mind anything with a little quotation in front of it here that means it's not read in the program so it's more just for you user information uh, you can turn on reflections etc all kinds of stuff here that you can change okay one of the things that you might have to change here is this one right here so once again it's giving you a little user kind of information you can set this from zero to one and what that does is it actually rotates the dmd uh, 90 degrees so that way if you are putting in a dmd monitor kind of sideways to save space then you might have to rotate it with this number right here you may find you have an issue when you go to start a game that the back glass is not popping up properly and if that's the case you can just go open up your script and what you're going to want to do is find your dmd stuff now this specific table script that i'm opening here won't actually have what we need but what you can do to find the area quicker is go to edit find and then just type in dmd and then you can just use the find next function to find where it would be now like i said it's not really in here because it's not using the direct b2s for this game so i will kick out of this but um, this is where you would look for it and what you're looking for is this right here so this is a post from uh, vp universe here um, so what you're looking for is set controller equals create object and then in brackets it is going to say something else. Usually they say vpen mame.controller and this in the quotations is what you want to change out for b2s.server. Make sure it's exactly the same, so capital letters and the, the period everywhere where it's supposed to be. Um, and that will usually be the, the number one fix. Now, some of these table scripts just say that, so you have to change it yourself. And some of them give you a case where you can literally go in and set what the number is for what case controller you want to do. So for example, you look here, this is the older one. There's our ultra. And then if we wanted to run B2S, you would have to set the case condition to three. So just take a look and see what you need to change in order for that to work. However, if you are sticking to the all-in-one installer, you won't have to do any of this because uh, most of the VP10 tables are already set up and uh, don't have to change these. 
But if for some reason they are there and you have to change it, uh, you'll know how to do it. All right, now if we kick back into the game here, I'll show you a couple other things that you need to know uh, just to find some quick access to some menus in the background. So let's start the game. All right, one of the first things is if you have your mouse on the main play field screen, if you press F1, you will get this menu popping up. Now, you don't usually have to play with pretty much anything in here, but you know, uh, if you have an issue with an extra DMD showing that you don't want on the screen, uh, this might be a setting here, or if you're having trouble where you can't get it into full screen cabinet mode, this little check mark might be off. Um, or you're not having any DMD, you might have this not checked off. So usually these three here is kind of uh, one of the things where you will figure out why things are not working on your table. So that's with F1. All right, now if you move your mouse to the back glass uh, monitor and you right click, you will find another menu. So this is for your B2S back glass server. Now, same thing, there's not a lot of settings you have to do, especially with the Baller All-in-One installer. It kind of sets and pre-plugins everything that you need to get this to work. However, um, if you do have some issues with DMDs not showing or double DMDs, or you want to change the look of the back glass artwork, because sometimes there's options where you can show the speakers uh, vi uh, digitally, or you can actually just stretch the screen out and make sure that's not there. So uh, these three are the ones you're going to play with. So if you um, want to hide one of the DMDs, that's extra. Or if it's not being shown, you can make it visible. And then uh, this is the options for the grill. So you can hide stuff. And um, sometimes up here where it says mode, there might even be some kind of cool custom back glasses that people have made. And they call them fantasy settings or fantasy modes. You can go in there and um, use that setting instead. Now, anything you do here, when you go to exit, you have to save it. And it will pop up a little error saying that you need to do a restart. So basically just shut it all down and restart it in order to make the changes. Now, as for your DMD screen, just put your mouse all the way to the right until you can see the arrow of your mouse on the DMD screen. And when you look at here, if this is not in the right spot or it's not big enough or it's too small, you can just left click on it and you can drag it to wherever you want. So when you make your cabinet, uh, you can fit it to exactly the hole that you cut out. Uh, you, so you can position the top left corner exactly where you want it, and then if you need to change the ratio on it, you can really squish it, shrink it, stretch it, whatever you want, and um, try to make it look good. Now, uh, this is a new thing for me. If you right-click on it, you can save it just for this one game, or you can actually save it globally, which means any visual pinball table, every single DMD will now be in that one spot. So that might be a good idea if you're setting up for a cabinet specifically. However, I still think you should do it just per game and get each game set up properly. That way, if there's an individual game where you actually want the DMD somewhere else, uh, there might be some spot on the play field, for example, and it might look funny without it there. So you could still save it uh, for per game and that would work probably better. All right, now when you're playing your pinball table, if you find that it is too quiet, the volume's not right, uh, sometimes you can go into the background and change the settings. Now, there's only a couple ways of doing this. The one way in the real cabinet was that you had to open up the coin door and there would be some service buttons inside. Now, because there isn't an actual coin door and service buttons, it's all emulated, there are keyboard buttons that let you do this. So, end key is simulating open up the coin door. And at this point, it's seven, eight, or nine is the keys that you're gonna to wanna to use. Now, if you can open the coin door, it's usually eight and nine. So in this case, eight is lowering the volume and nine is raising the volume. So you can set it to whatever you'd like for your game. And then all you gotta do is press the end key and or just wait 10, 20 seconds and it will be set. And then the other type of volume control was for certain other tables. And to be able to do that, you basically press seven to get to your audits and adjustments. And then you basically just keep pressing it until you find, and you can hold it down to speed it up. You go through all this until you get to expand adjust. Then you press one to be able to change those settings. So we want yes, and then you go back to pressing seven again. And then go through this one at a time until you find the one that says volume.
you can see all the different settings you can do too. All right, here's your volume control. So once again, back to one to change this. So right now we have no music. Or we can go in percentages. So 25%, 50. And then set it to whatever you want. Now to save the settings, you just have to press F3 and it will save for you. Once you got your table working properly in Visual Pinball X, it's time to get everything set up for the pinup player part of it. So uh, open up your pinup folder here, and instead of doing front end, we want to go into the config. So double left click, and then with this screen here, we've got our main setup here. So our games manager, we want to click that, and you can see we've got our two games in here. And if we put the game files and the tables and everything in properly, we can actually just go up to here and say add new games. And then we can scan for it. So we've got our nudge test and calibration that's automatically there, but we're not going to put that one in. And we have a demo VPX table. So that's the one we just put in. So we're going to just collect that one. And then we're going to add the game to the system. Okay, one game added. Perfect. Okay, and then we're going to close this. All right, so we're going to go to Playlist Config. And you can see right now it's not selected anything in specific. So it's showing every game on the system so far. And so there's our two games. So if we go to Visual Pinball X, you'll notice that only the one Leprechaun King is in there. So here are the games that can possibly go in. So we just got to select our table that we just added. Put Add Game. And then just close this out. And keep in mind, you can filter this too, so if you want, you can make it select only for games that would be for Visual Pinball X. That way it doesn't get too confusing. Okay, let's close this. And then we want to go to Media Manager. Now, this is where all the magic happens. So let's open this. All right, so once again, let's focus on just Visual Pinball X for right now. Uh, so we've got our demo table here. Now, we have a ton of options and customization that we can do for this game. Uh, now, what we're looking at is all of the different monitors and videos and things that you could have such as when the game loads what we're looking at uh, different kind of audio while you're looking at the game you can have different audio while it's launching so lots of cool customization that you can do in here you could find a really cool music from a band and put it in or maybe some music or a quote or something a little snippet from the film of the game that you're putting in so lots of cool customization stuff here now the big main ones are uh, the play field so we want to have something for the play field now this box if you have an image you can literally drop and drag it into there and then it will sh uh, save it for you or you can click on this little icon here to do a search for it now, right now, we're, we've, it's looking for demo VPX, which it's not going to find. So if we look up uh, Tails, you can see all the different stuff in here. So we've got different kind of frame rates that you can select. So really, you should be probably trying to match something that is the same frame rate of what you're doing. So probably take this one here. You can also try to match it up with the exact version that you have. And if you double left click on it, it will give you a little preview of what that little video looks like so that you can add it in uh, or at least take a look at it. Now if you want to download and use it, you can do that. And you'll notice that the screen went green, so that means that that is saved and put in there. So if you left click on it, and it'll show you the table uh, video MP4 that's there for that. Now same thing with the back glass, so we can do a little search for that. Okay, and then if you like that, you can download and use that one. And then we've got load screens. Now, the load screens are the same thing. You can kind of search for something. Some of the people in the community have made their own little uh, load screens, which is really quite cool. So this one's got kind of some little movie clips and stuff like that. However, you can also put any video you want in here. So if I don't like what's there or something's not available that's kind of specific for the game, I usually just kind of type in pinball. And then you can look at some different load screens here. So uh, this one's pretty cool, but I might have to turn down the audio. 
for this part so I don't get uh, flagged on YouTube for it. So very quite cool. Uh, and then there's a couple other ones in here. So if you didn't like that one, there is another one right here. And that one's for full screen. So uh, which one? That's desktop. So we would want this one here. So let's put this one in for right now. Okay, and then another really important one is while you're looking at these nice monitors, while you're selecting the game, you want some audio. So there should be some audio clips in here that will pop up. Okay, so if you wanted to use that. Now, that's about everything you need, unless you want to put some custom audio stuff, like some little video clips from a movie or something like that. Um, oh, I'm missing another big one here. So the wheel image, this one will tell you as you're cycling through your collection, uh, just kind of a nice little like title in a certain shape or form with uh, what the actual game is. So let's uh, get one for this. So I've got nice little kind of examples of what they could be. Okay, so let's say you like this one. Now, I haven't played around with too much of the other ones here, but you literally can put some other stuff for DMDs and any topper videos, um, instructions and info flyers and things like that. So quite a bit of customization in here. But um, for what we're doing here, uh, you guys can mess around with that later. So let's close this. Now, when you are all set up, you can exit and launch from here and then check out what you've done. So we're into the front end here, and uh, now you can start cycling through your games here. Now, these ones, uh, I'm not sure why they have their own kind of thing here. Uh, so we might be able to change that for the playlist and that, and that way they're not kind of just all by themselves sitting out here. But uh, now you can go through to your tables, and we just added something to Visual Pinball, so one to enter into it. And there is our Arabian Nights. Now, uh, we've got a main play field video going, and I have the audio turned off just so you guys can hear me, but uh, it works. However, the back glass did not work, so we're going to kick out and just see what happened there. One eternity later. Oh my god. Computers, I have a love-hate relationship with you guys. When things work, and you feel confident and competent, and oh, everything happens, and you feel great, and then every now and then you've got one little glitch or something that happens, and you try everything under the sun to be able to fix it, and it just does not work. That's my love-hate relationship with you computers. Uh, however, I'm going to get this sorted out, and then I'll show you what I did after. All right, so a couple other little glitches. Um, I'm sure if I went through the wiki on Nailbuster's original post on what settings you have to have everything, this would work out okay. But I did have another little kind of glitch here with the baller installer that uh, when I went to go run the games, back glasses were being hidden behind stuff, um, displays were popping up. The this desktop menu, like parts of this, were showing and popping through. So I had to go in and change some settings. So I'll show you what I did instead of wasting a lot of time here. So I'll go up to popper setup, screens, and then this is the settings that uh, are working for me. So just kind of go through the modes and make sure that the screens match up here for what you have. Uh, the other thing that I had to do is when I was doing the loading screens, it's set up for a different type of loading screen. So I unchecked the transparent box and then I changed these values here and that way that gives me a full load screen uh, for the image that I want instead of trying to squish it. Uh, so those are the settings that work for me so if you want to use those and get, get your stuff going faster then that'll be awesome. And then let's just load this up here and I'll show you what it looks like. So no more windows kind of uh, popping up through here and we've got our games. 
let's load up our demo game that we've got. Okay, there's our Tales of the Arabian Nights. Black, back glass is working, and then loading it up here. I've got the custom load screen. It was shrunk at one point, but like I said, those settings have fixed that. And then one other final thing in the background is I had my back glass not up. It was, it was opening it, but it was kind of hidden behind, and none of the settings that I could change fixed that. So what I ended up having to do is going into the back glass setting, right click on it, and then right here where it says bring BG form to top. I've never had to set this before, I don't think so anyway. Uh, this was making it pop back up for me uh, as opposed to being hidden and having to press alt tab to try to find where it was. And it was opened, it was just not bringing it up to the front. So that one seemed to fix that for that, so you may have that issue uh, with yours as well. Alright, and then we can kick out of this, and everything is working pretty good. So, that is how you can install a table in Visual Pinball and get it set up with all the videos and everything you need for the pinup player system. Tales of the Arabian Nights is a table that is starting to really grow on me. I remember it back in the day, and I remember how insanely cool this thing looked. There was just so much to do on this table, so many flashing lights, and cool music, and cool real plastic genie figures and all kinds of cool stuff going on at so i'm kind of starting to lean towards maybe making a tales of the arabian nights themed cabinet uh, i still haven't 100 percent decided but uh, i would definitely make a really nice table including possibly making a custom real life topper of a sword with the seven different colored gemstones in it that we could make from scratch and have it actually flash up with leds as you collect them in the game how cool would that be? Hopefully that was some good info for you to be able to get your visual pinball table set up. Uh, I'm gonna stop there though, and in future videos I will do how to set up your future pinball tables, including probably how to set up BAM with your Xbox 360 Kinect camera for eye tracking. Oh my God, how cool is that gonna be? And then uh, also FX2 and FX3 available through Steam, how to get that all set up. Uh, I haven't even done that yet, so I gotta figure it out for you guys, and that way you guys have an easier time doing it. All right, there you go. Now you have some information to get some tables working for your virtual pinball cabinet and now that you've got the monitors you can actually try it out and test it out and uh, you're gonna find that this part of your build starts to grind to a halt because you're gonna be too busy playing this thing and not getting on ordering parts and designing your cabinet and starting on the actual wood cutting part so uh, yeah it's part of the process and enjoy it um, if you have any questions or concerns about what happened in the video today feel free to put them in the comment section below and I will get back to you as soon as possible and I will put all the links and to everything that I used in this video down in the description below as well so till next time take it easy